So it's happened. Kathleen Kennedy has apparently gotten her way with the acolyte. Leslie Headland's come out and, and admitted that her story that she's written, produced, directed some episodes has decided that the message and the message being the discussion on gender norms is more important than telling a good story. And that's the reason why the show um, is not getting the views that they were expecting. Because what they've done is they've pushed away actual Star Wars fans to go after the, I don't know, 1% or 2% of the people out there that buy into the diversity, equity, and inclusion, you know, DEI, those checkboxes that Disney, for some reason, well, I know why they did, but so they could up their ESG score to tell other corporations and, and those on the progressive left side of the aisle, hey, look at us, we're doing, we're doing what you want us to do. But by not telling a story, a compelling story, and building characters, you've taken a once great franchise and you've made it a shell of its former self. You, you've, you've trashed George Lucas. You have ignored canon. You have rewritten things such as The Force. You replace the force with something called the thread. You have um, trashed the story of Anakin Skywalker by having lesbian witches having the immaculate conception. That was in episode three. You have a character who appeared in The Phantom Menace who has a lifespan of about 50 years appearing in a show that takes place 100 years before The Phantom Menace who stated that the Sith had been extinct for millennia only to realize in the show that the Sith existed 100 years before The Phantom Menace. And so when you start doing these things, oh, don't forget about the force whip. Remember, they made, made a big deal about the lightsaber whip. Force whip, lightsaber whip. At this point, who cares? Um, and all they used the lightsaber whip for was killing a giant bug. Wasn't even used in battle. So... Episode 6 was last Tuesday. And according to that park place, John Trent, check out his socials, check out his YouTube channel. Uh, the Acolyte, Episode 6, falls off top 10 chart for streaming originals. Now, here's the chart here. And as you can see, the Acolyte from June 21st to 27th, 2024, was sitting at number nine. And in the article here, John Trent writes, it's unclear what kind of viewership the Acolyte brought in and whether or not the show saw a decline this week or not. The reason being is that Luminate reported last week that the Acolyte only brought in 232.2 million minutes watched. Given that the lowest show clocked in at 282 million minutes, it is possible that the Acolyte saw its viewership increase. However, this would defy the quickly forming trend of the show. The trend of the show is, is that it's been declining week after week after week after week after week. The Acolyte only brought in 210 million minutes watched in its premiere week. It ballooned to 380.5 million in its second week. 
and then saw its minutes watch decline by nearly a third in its third week to 262 million. Show's fourth week only brought in 232.2 million minutes watched. Now, he does mention here this kind of is a trend similar to Willow, which was canceled after one season on Disney+. Plus. So, the, the viewership isn't there. And I know last week there were some articles out there about a possible season two. I can't see how they can green light a season two for this sh- series. Remember, most of the series that Disney has put out be it Marvel or Lucasfilm, the majority of those series never got a season two. Only a handful got a season two, and only The Mandalorian went on for a season three, and they're they're talking that it's going to have a season four and a movie. So there's that. Now, then there's this. Leslie Headland admits she's using Star Wars and the Acolyte to push discussion on gender norms. It's so wildly intentional. Yeah, what she's doing is, is she's she's doing a, a a role reversal. Where if you notice in season in episode six, Osha's taking on the strong female role, and Kamir has basically become a beta. He's supposed to be Sith. He's supposed to be strong. He's supposed to be masculine. But if you watch the episode, he's more effeminate he's he's a beta leslie headland in, in an interview with collider points out the the costumes and the symbolism take that aside just look at the interaction look at the look at the body language not to mention the fact that you know kamir decided to bear all to osha but that's that's just a minor thing compared to what they're doing here with this show. And Leslie Headland says, it's so clear what's going on, so anybody's picking up on it. Congrats. Awesome. But again, the dynamics had to be what they are after what he did in episode five. No, they didn't. In episode five, Kamir was an alpha. He took charge. He took control. He defeated five Jedi Knights. But no, we can't have that. We can't have him being a strong, masculine character. We have to see the beta side. We have to make him a beta. And it's intentional. And that doves into the portrayal of the Jedi. She said she's not criticizing the Jedi as they exist in George Lucas's over. But she is. See, in George Lucas's Star Wars, the Jedi were the good guys. They were the peacemakers. They in they basically, you know, kept the peace. They were diligent. They were measured. But in the Acolyte, they're made out to be the bad guys. That they're they're oppressor they're oppressors. They're keeping Kamir from being who he who he really wants to be. You know, what was it what was it that Saul said asked him and he said he wanted freedom? Freedom to use his power as he wished. You know, as a side note, I will say this. In this series, the actor who plays Saul. He's done a really good job with the with the turd that he's been given, in my opinion. So that's where we're at now with Star Wars. They ignore canon. They ignored 
they basically rewrote everything George Lucas had laid out within the original trilogy, the prequels. And now they've made Star Wars this bastion of in inclusivity, diversity, equity. Star Wars was originally written for, for boys, for men. And now, at the direction of Kathleen Kennedy, I guess the force truly is female. So, I don't know, guys. The critics still like it. The audience still hates it. As you can see here on Rotten Tomatoes, it hasn't moved. It moved down to 13% for a small bit, but then it kicked back up to 14% for the audience score. So on the eve of episode seven, which I guess is supposed to be a flashback episode again, keep in mind there's only two episodes left in the series for season one. Um, I, I, I just don't know what to, what to say or what to think anymore. I mean, we know now that based on Leslie Headland's words that the show is being used to push a message, which again, pushing a message doesn't equal ratings, doesn't equal views. Telling a, a compelling story, character development, building a world, that equals ratings, that equals views. So what do you guys think? About the comments from Leslie Headland. What do you think about the fact that the viewership is tanking? Every week it gets lower and lower and lower. What do you think about a possible season two? Comment down below. While you're at it, please take the time to smash that like button. It helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Helps get my videos uh, seen by more eyeballs here on YouTube. Also over on Rumble. Uh, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you like what I'm doing, like what I'm putting out, subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video. And with that, I will see you guys later.